This is our house that we moved into just over 10 years ago. It's all electric now, gas is yet to be removed, but soon it will be. And it's cost us over the last 12 months, just 550 pounds to run. That's all our utility bills, excluding water. So all your hot water, all your heating, all the electric consumption, everything. Just 550 quid for a full year. It's a five bedroom house. It's always occupied because we have different shift patterns. So based on that, I would say that this is a very cheap house to run. However, at what cost? We spent a lot of money on things like that heat pump and other stuff I'm about to show you. So has it made at least financial sense? For us personally, absolutely made sense. Almost a no brainer. However, what we paid for the various items isn't necessarily what you could get now because prices have gone up, mainly labor, but effectively there's no point in me telling you how much we've paid and how much we're saving because unless it's recreatable, it's kind of a meaningless statistic. So what I'm gonna do is look at how much we're saving. So how much we've paid over the last 12 months compared to how much we would have been paying had we not done any of this and then how much it would cost us to recreate what we have at today's prices. I also find it quite interesting that people always want a payback, as it were, with anything that's labeled green or workery, because, well, I'm spending all this money, when's it gonna give me my money back? No one ever says that for a gas boiler. I'm getting a new gas boiler fitted, when's it gonna pay for itself? I'm getting a new kitchen fitted, when am I gonna get my money back? Sometimes people buy things because they want them, not necessarily just because they, they can save money with it. We did this to give us a level of financial protection. For example, a year, year and a half ago when the electricity prices and gas prices shot up, it didn't really affect us at all because our bills were so low. Now, whichever way you justify it, it's immaterial. We're all here for the facts and figures, aren't we? How much it's cost us and how much we're saving. When will it break even? Let's start with solar panels that I can't quite see on the roof there. These, even 10 years ago when we moved into this house, were an obvious thing to at least look into the future for. They were more expensive then than they are now, but ultimately there were fit payments that are no longer around and we don't have access to the fit payments either. So it's just export. For 90, 95% of the people watching this, I think solar panels will very much make financial sense at least, but they've been around a long time. So we all know what they do. A heat pump. It does all our hot water and our heating and effectively replaced a gas boiler that had failed. We needed a new heating system, so it's either gas central heating, on-demand boiler, or this. I'm not expecting anyone out there to replace a perfectly good boiler with a heat pump. Wait until you need something. Then you can look at the cost of the gas boiler versus the cost of the heat pump and compare it against, well, whatever options you've got. Interestingly though, this heat pump, out of the three main items I'm showing you, was the cheapest. And then we have this, the home battery system. I have two 9.5 kilowatt hour batteries, giving me a total usable capacity of 19 kilowatt hours. That's my inverter, and that does the solar panels and the battery as well. This is the other side of the heat pump, the hot water tank and all the other gubbins, and effectively that completes the main three. These give me enough capacity to run the house by charging up at night, at a cheap rate of electric, especially in winter, when there's very little to no solar. And then it powers the house, including the heat pump, throughout the rest of the day. Only if it's about minus 10 or colder, do we end up dipping into the peak rate for maybe one to three weeks of the year. So they're perfectly sized for our usage pattern. And of course, at times like this, when there's a good amount of solar, I barely touch the grid, if you exclude the EV charging anyway. Like Mark Morrison, it's the return of the whiteboard of truth. And you can see from these badly drawn diagrams we have here, that's, that's solar panels, is that? That's what that meant to be. Hang on. Yeah, that's the sun. Uh, home battery system. And that's a heat pump. I mean, you knew this already. You didn't have to have me explain it to you, but that will be the cost of install for each of those. So again, that's as if we were doing it right now, today. And um, then I will have the total cost for this holy trinity, if you will, the electrification of this house. Effectively, that's the cost of the house if we hadn't have done any of this. 
So the electric and the gas, if we just were as we were beforehand. So there's been no solar panels, no battery, no heat pump. It's just what it would have cost us, as what it would have cost us at today's rates. So gas and electric, um, given the usage of what we used before all this turned up. And then the after, well, we already know that, that's £550. I'll write that in in a second. So then we'll have the yearly saving. So that's based on the last 12 months. And then from that and that, we can see how many years it will pay itself back, so to speak, which is mainly what people are bothered about, even though a lot of people out there just sometimes get something because they want it. A lot of people look at this as some sort of financial investment. I am sure there will be people in the comments right now saying that I would have been better off spending all this money on Tesla shares or Bitcoin or some sort of financial investment, whatever. I'm just saying this is what we've done and the price here will be, well, it is quite a bit less um, than, than I'm showing you because we paid a lot less for these than you can get today, as I said, because things are more expensive. So for us, that's the same, but this cost is considerably lower, and therefore, well, well we've, we've probably got another three, two, two and a half, maybe three years, and where where we've done, we've, we're paid off, so to speak. So let's start with the solar panels. What they would cost me to get my system again, um, which is a relatively budget system, I should say, that is four thousand pounds. So that's a lot of money. The home battery system. So again, I have 19 kilowatt hours worth of storage. That was increased so I can now power my house through the day, as I said earlier, um, heat pump and all, even in winter. So for me, a battery makes more sense if you've got the time of day tariff than solar panels do because you can save the same, save the same amount every day, all year round, it's not seasonal. So again, a battery now with the vat removal is probably a better alternative if you can only do one at a time. Right, so how much was the battery that cost us, or would cost us to right now to get the same system? I managed to find a good price, that's meant to be a key. 10.2 thousand pounds, so that's, that's the big one. Um, if I didn't have a heat pump, then that would be consider considerably less, probably around the six um, bracket, because this obviously uses a lot of electricity up. Heat pump, that cost us, now we have to be very specific on this one. This is how much it cost us on top of what a gas boiler would have cost us. Now I can't remember the exact amount, but let's say it was something like two and a half thousand pounds for a new gas boiler. We needed a new heating system. Well, that's gonna cost us two and a half. So how much extra did the heat pump cost us post grant? Uh, so that cost us on top 3,300 pounds. Why did I put that as that? My apologies. Do it in the same format, it kind of makes more sense. Um, so that was £3,300 more than the gas boiler would have cost us. Because you need something, the gas boilers aren't free, but effectively it was, uh, I think, five and a half plus what today's grant would be. So the grant is making a big difference. If that goes, then things change completely. However, these are coming down in price, the heat pump, in terms of the installed price. Not that fast, but they are coming down. Now, that gives us a total cost of 17,500 pounds. That's a lot of money. Remember, this has been a decade old plan. So now, does this make sense? Does this justify the man maths for us to have done all this? 2,300 50 pounds. So that's based on, again, what it would have cost us had this all not have happened. Remember, five bed house, always occupied, um, gas and electric for a year's worth of, of all that. After, we already know this, that's 550 pounds, which means we are saving, at least for the last year, 1,800 pounds. Now, that in theory, should go up each year, or at least 10 years from now, it will be a greater saving. There's definitely a political will to make gas more expensive than electric. So if you think about what it used to be just three, four, five years ago, well, it was about two pence per kilowatt hour for gas, and now it's gone up, what, four fold, five fold? I mean, it went to 10 at one point. Electric also went up considerably. 
But when you were looking at 12, 13, 14 pence per kilowatt hour, four or five years ago, it's now at about an average of 24, 25p. So although it did skyrocket, it's come back down again. So electric has doubled, but gas has quadrupled on possibly more. And I only see that going up. So the more that something like that happens, um, the more the savings are. Even if we don't account for you know, that inflationary sort of change and we keep 1,800 pounds a year saving, I do expect to, to again beat that just by tweaking the heat pump a little bit and tweaking the various settings. But let's assume it does stay the same. Then what we need to do is 17 and a half thousand pounds divided by that, which gives us, pretend I'm figuring it out in my head, 9.72 years. Now, I'll leave it up to you whether or not you think it's worth all this. And remember, if I did just then two, I would need a smaller battery, or you know, I certainly won't have to spend that as, as much as that, sorry. Um, the savings wouldn't be as great, but it does knock about a year off that. In our case, we didn't pay that. In fact, it was quite a bit less than that, which, well, I would probably knock several years off this one, probably six years, I reckon, our payback period was. And that's based on my Give Energy battery system. There's another battery system out there, there right now um, that you could get a 20.8 kilowatt hour battery version of with a six kilowatt hybrid inverter. So effectively what I have now, and that would be half that price. So that's, that's you know, long warranty. That's what I would call a more premium battery system compared to the one I've just mentioned, but you can do this cheaper. So if you knock five grand off that, this payback period suddenly becomes a lot more palatable. The heat pump, again, this is going to be very variable. I've seen some that would be considerably higher than that. I've even spoken to several people very recently whose, you know, because of the grant, install cost is zero. They're saving two and a half grand compared to getting a gas boiler and the running costs are lower for reasons that I've already done in the channel. If you want to know more about the heat pump and the batteries and whatnot, all those videos are in the channel. I'm not going to go through it in this video. So this is going to be very variable depending on your usage patterns. And as I said earlier, with the, you know, the gap, the, the savings increase between doing nothing and doing this, I would expect that to be definitely below nine years, even in this house with that system. So yeah, that's it really. I'm, I'm not here to sell you any of this, you know, battery, heat pump, solar panels, it's up to you what you get. You might look at this and think, nah, not for me. If you're curious as to how I can get a 20 point whatever kilowatt hour battery for probably less than half of that, then whatever you do, don't search for Polar on YouTube. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, you know, so for some people, this won't make sense at all from a purely financial point of view. But as I said earlier, some people do this because they want to. I've just removed our carbon monoxide detectors because we've no gas appliance in the house anymore. So we're not gonna you know, have that potential fatality because of a dodgy hob or gas boiler or anything like that. Imagine the, the papers, imagine the mainstream media, let alone people on Twitter and Facebook. If you had to get a sensor for a battery or solar panels or even a heat pump that basically meant, well, if it leaks, it's gonna kill you. It, it would be all over the Daily Mail but we're just used to it with gas boilers. There's nothing wrong with a gas boiler. I'm not trying to say, let's decarbonize everything and all the usual walkery stuff I get accused of. I'm saying this is what we've done and this is the outcome. Our gas boiler has heated us for, well, all my life. If I think about the houses I grew up in and the houses we owned, it's done us proudly. It's done really well. It's provided for us. It's heated the homes. It's done everything we need it to be. Like petrol or oil, if you will. For cars, it's changed society, but it's time that, well, it gets replaced with something a bit more efficient. This isn't a political thing. I'm not doing these videos for any other reason other than making money out of monetization. <clears throat> but I did this, and I would have done this anyway, regardless of the YouTube channel. It's, it's like people think you're some sort of crusader because you've got a channel. I'm not. I couldn't care less what you buy. Sorry, I'm going off on a little bit of a rant once more. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I'm done, um, let me know what you think. And if you've got these three, or maybe just two of them, how much have you spent? And do you have the full figures? Have you got like a full 12 months of usage with all these in place? Is it comparable? Is it cheaper? Is it more expensive? 
Um, and do you do this sort of thing yourself? Did you do it for financial reasons or for environmental reasons, for geekery reasons, for a bit of both? What, what have you done? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Remember, if you want to become a member for 99p, just 99 pence, that's inflation busting, then you get videos on Sunday instead of Friday. And there's a second channel called Driving Home where the podcast occasionally sits. Um, so again, thanks for watching. See you soon.